That's it. Okay. <laughs> I forgot I was going to be on TV. I did a really bad job of preparing uh, the introduction here. But you guys know both of these guys, um, Hal Mayhew and E.J. Bishop. Um, and they're going to come up and tell us about the um, sustainability project, how it's going over there at the Union Arena, um, trying to make it a uh, zero <coughs> energy yeah, use yeah. building. So, guys, come on up. And, and I just want to take the opportunity to personally thank Hal for doing the music at the Penny Sale. Always does a great job, and then I don't have to do it. <laughs> All right. So I it was a few years ago that uh, we were in front of you, and we talked about um, kicking off a uh, sustainability campaign for Union Arena. And uh, so we did kick that off that year, which was great. And today, Hal and I are back, lucky you, to share with you some exciting news, our progress, and next steps. But before we share them, let me um, take a moment and refresh our memories. Some of you may recall that back in 2000, uh, 2013, the arena embarked on a campaign to retire all its long-term and short-term debt to become more financially stable. In 2015, that goal was reached. It was at that time we needed to find more ways or ways to be sustainable for the future. We established goals and developed a strategy to become net zero. Thank you, Eric. I'm going to read our goals again. Uh, we showed them to you three years ago. Make the arena sustainable so that future generations can enjoy the benefits it, be, it brings to the community. Upgrade and update the existing refrigeration, heating, ventilation, and lighting systems become a net zero facility defined by no net operational cost for the building's electric and fuel consumption. Get a net zero, oh, excuse me, get to net zero without <laughs> sacrificing the quality of the ice or the user's experience. Use a portion of the money saved to provide the lowest possible cost for all youth and family skating programs. And finally, use a portion of the savings to build a new endowment for the arena to ensure that future financial obligations are covered, including the long-term maintenance of the facility. Our basic strategy was to reduce our energy consumption and to lower our carbon footprint and add renewable energy to offset remaining electrical costs. Sorry. So, I also want to remind you of the things that we do at Re Union Arena, some of you might or might not know. We... Sorry. 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 Oh. I already had that one up. Oh, you already had that one up? I, I'm not looking behind me, sorry. <laughs> Boy, all the training that we had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we rehearsed it. Yeah. Hours. Hours. <laughs> Last year, in 2018, um, Union Arena hosted over 50 community-oriented programs, believe it or not. I actually went over that with Kim, and she said, no way. And I'm like, yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. um, in those 50 uh, community-oriented programs, I'm not going to read the list, but Things like alumni games, birthday parties, curling, obviously ice hockey, adult youth, um, lacrosse practices. I don't think we had the high school graduation last year because it was a sunny day, but we prepare for it every year. Um, phys ed classes, private rentals, public skates, and on and on. In those 50, program, or 50 programs, we served over 20,000 people, individual people. We have over 100,000 visits, but a lot of those people are returning. But over t uh, estimate over 20,000 people that we served in those 50 programs. You can go to the next slide. You're still, you're yeah. still on the first one, Henry. Keep going. It's not moving. It's not moving. Did you um, the other thing I want to remind you of is that. Sorry. Yeah. There you go. And we we got here early just so we wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> um, we estimate that Union Arena generates about $2.5 million to this community, which is pretty incredible. And um, hopefully it makes a nice statement of why it's there. Um, we also, hey, there you go. Those are the programs. <laughs> if you can go to the next slide. And. The other thing that um, I want to remind everybody is Union Arena is privately funded. 
we've never received any tax dollars, which is kind of interesting. When I first got here, I got a couple of calls in the first year, and uh, some people were, were asking some questions about something. And so, well, my, my tax dollars are paying for this. And I nicely said, well, actually, no, they're not. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's just interesting what people perceive and so on. It was, it was all money raised by several hardworking people in 2003. Um, I, I ended with a slide here before I turn this over to Hal. We've been very fortunate to have two boys state championships in a row and the girls finished uh, second runners up in the finals last year. So kind of exciting, all local talent. And um, so in 2003, I don't know if the dream was to have a state championship, but you do now. So that's kind of cool. So I'm gonna turn it over to Hal and maybe I'll do a better job on that side. <laughs> 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 and, uh, Hal's going to talk about uh, what we've accomplished. All right. Thank you. That's like a great comedy. That was a goal. Don't be an electrician. What's the next slapstick thing we're doing up there? All right. There's two main things we want to get across today. Two main things we want to um, say. We want to report what it says on this slide right now. We started this four or five years ago. We came here, we talked to the Rotary Club. The Rotary Club has been very generous in their donations as have many, many people, literally hundreds and hundreds of people in the community. and. Um, so we're two phases into a four-phase project, and based on our <coughs> energy bills, our consumption is down more than 50%. So we are literally more than halfway to the net zero target, and that's big. That puts us in a class uh, with very few uh, other exceptional uh, uh, ranks around uh, North America. So uh, EJ talked about the various net zero uh, approaches. We have already done the top two. We've updated the refrigeration system and we've updated the HVAC system. The next one, the third one in is adding a renewable energy source and then finally adding system integration. And this was our original projection for how we were going to go from where we were to net zero. And we're actually, we're actually um, doing much better than what we projected. And I'll show you that on a, on a later slide. So if you want to. So what have we done? Um, these are pictures of the refrigeration system that we've upgraded. Um, we've refurbished compressors. We've switched out uh, a lot of things that needed to be done uh, right in the heart of the unit. This is the thing that makes the ice. You can see that. Can it's back uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyhow, uh, you want to go to the next one here? We replaced the cooling tower. Uh, we. Uh, we added uh, variable frequency drives to the cooling tower. Um, we changed the water treatment system. Um, go up to the next one there. These are some of the photos of some of, the, that's the new HVAC system, uh, air handler and dehumidifier. Uh, some of the things that we did to get there was uh, not just replacing the equipment, but <laughs> developing uh, ways to improve that energy efficiency. For instance, that unit right there that says Munters, um, you know, we switched over to what's called demand control for air, fresh air, so that you basically only bring in fresh air when the sensors say the air quality is such that you require it. We put in modulating furnaces instead of furnaces that are all on or off. 
which allows them to only come on as much as needed. We put in a regeneration wheel, which is 70% more efficient than the previous one. Essentially, it's just bigger and thicker. Um, so some really basic strategies to, uh, to get that energy efficiency. And it allowed us to, um, where, we, where we had much of the day where there's not a lot going on there, to be able to recirculate the heated air so we didn't have to keep reheating it for no good reason. So, And uh, we did do a couple of things out of phase four, and one of them was a heat recovery system. So we get a, an enormous amount of heat off the compressors. That's why there's a cooling tower on the roof, which is sort of standard for a rink. Um, but you have to say, hey, if you've got a cooling tower on the roof, that means you're sending heat up into the atmosphere, literally warming the globe. And so what we tried to do uh, is to start to recapture some of that heat. And we'll do more of it in later phases. So that we, we now, through this system, are capturing literally millions of BTUs each day off the compressors and putting it into the building heat systems. Um, it's a pretty straightforward strategy, tricky to pull off though, um, but we've, we uh, actually will be uh, adding to our storage capacity in upcoming phase because we've got, you know, still a lot of excess heat. Um, so, uh, and these are some of the new controls. Um, the chip that was in the system that we had at the time we did it, it was cutting edge. I think it was, uh, a computer guy might know this, like a Pentium 386 or something like that, that was running our controls over there. So from like 1999. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so we, uh, we changed that out. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, yeah, good luck with that. I couldn't do it. <laughs> if you miss it, it's gone. <laughs> oh, you got it back. You're a genius. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, this shows, uh, uh, we originally slated the whole thing for about $1.4 million total project cost. And so, we're a little over $800,000 into it. Those are all dollars, again, from donations and nothing from taxes. And the 572 is the amount that we would have left to complete everything and essentially get to net zero. So, um, uh, so that's where we are uh, money-wise. So here's the adjusted savings and essentially, the one under 2014 shows how much energy we would be using, how much it would cost if we didn't make any improvements in energy conservation. And so our energy costs would be over $160,000. And um, so in reality, we're saving compared to doing nothing already almost a hundred and a hundred thousand dollars a year on this which is really good um, return on investment is very good keep going um, so this is the next big thing that I wanted to you know make a point of so that's how we did in the first two phases and now we're getting ready for the next big phase and it's actually the least complicated of all the phases. And it's adding an energy source, a renewable energy source, and in this case, solar PV. Um, so I've got up there the, the projected cost, the amount of kilowatt hours saved, how much would be saving in addition to what we're currently saving per year, and a rough idea of the schedule and these are all estimates at this point. So far, our estimates have been pretty good, uh, but that's what, what they are right now. To give you an idea, um, 
210,000 kilowatt hours, we've already dropped uh, over, over 250. Over 250,000. So we were we were at uh, over 500,000 kilowatt hours when we started, and we're down to roughly half that right now. So this this will take us uh, quite a bit uh, further. So that's the next big thing is that we're getting ready to start this next phase. Go ahead. And the phase, when we complete it, should get us to 80% of uh, net zero. And we would be the first one in North America to make it that far. We're already right on the leading edge of as far as anybody has already gotten mm -hmm. so without any solar panels. Mm -hmm. So, um, <clears throat> Any questions? <coughs> yes? What else do you have to do to get the rest of the way? Mm -hmm. um, the, the end part is a lot of, um, of adjustments in um, the harmonics of the electrical system mm -hmm. as it relates to the equipment, uh, changing out capacitors and retuning them yeah. um, to um, uh, we have some additional frequency drives we want to add in and we want to reclaim more of the the heat um, off the compressors um, to get that extra that final like 20 percent or so um, so that's the general strategy it's probably the most complex engineering wise so yes Good presentation, guys. Don't take it on the road yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> a little more the the solar know. aspect. Yes. Um, two days ago, the headlines in the Valley News that they're going to want to cut back drastically on the net metering, and I put in 8.3 kW you know, eight years ago, and now they want to just take that out from under me. But how is that entering into your calculations? That is a great question, and it, and, and it is no surprise it came from a Dodger fan. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say. <laughs> a fellow Dodger fan. So, yeah, that uh, actually changed our whole program, the way we were looking at it. We had two... Um, tracks of land that were essentially offered up to us to do some net metering and that was the direction initially a few years ago we were heading and um, because of what's going on with the net metering right now our current um, our current plan is to use the roof that we have on the arena to, to mount those and we've already uh, retained the original structural engineer to start working with him on, you know, the whole, the whole plan to do that. Um, but that's a, that is a great question because it literally is something we didn't talk about, but we literally changed our plan <coughs> based on exactly that. Yeah. And like FERC has done with the hydro plants all these years, you know, they say these are the rates you can count on, so you go and build your project out, oh, well, we change our mind, it's going to be this or that. Yeah. And tied in with that, today it was the, uh, uh, in the Valley News also, was the article about the uh, electric recharging stations for the cars. And I, I couldn't help but, I don't own one, but I couldn't help but notice that, yes, this uh, very high efficient one is going to give you uh, 60 to 80 miles in a 20 sec 20 minute charge and I can just imagine my life driving around wherever and a lot of people drive longer distance than I do oh yeah okay I think I'll stop for another 20 minutes to go to the next 60 miles I just can't imagine it and yeah. yet they they want to get to no more fossil fuels in Vermont for cars hello I don't think it's going to happen <laughs> Uh, any other questions? <laughs> yes, sir. Who's been, who's been uh, your engineering consultants, HVAC, through the project? Uh, we used um, uh, 
ENGVT uh, for part of it. Um, I've been sort of uh, basically donating all my time to it as well. Like, um, uh, uh, but ENGVT is the mechanical engineering company um, that uh, you know we uh, consulted with for detailed calculations and things when we really needed to have them. I don't do anything all by myself. You know, I, I, I don't. You know, um, and we had. Uh, I just want. I just want to add to that that he's being pretty modest, but. In my short term, you know, hockey rank, I've learned that, you know, the, the engineers that we've hired are, are excellent, and, uh, but without Hal's expertise, so just sort of connect the dots. So we've been very fortunate to have an in-house person mm -hmm. that's really <coughs> made this happen, and, and I'm not saying that just to get on your good side. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's really true. I mean, what I've learned is that what we've been accomplishing in the arena is sort of out there, a lot. Nobody's really doing a lot of this stuff, and because of his background and niche with with hockey rinks, it's really added to aided to the project tremendously. So. Well, well, thank you. We'll overlook the PowerPoint. S someday I'm going to learn <laughs> to conquer PowerPoint. Okay. <laughs> what? Don't walk away with it. Don't walk away. Get them all excited. Oh, I got it. <laughs> if I heard correctly, uh, you have two parcels of land that were gift, gifted to you? Uh, no, they were offered, but we didn't take them oh, okay. because of what um, we just talked about. Uh, so, um, yeah, from, so that way back years ago when we originally laid it out, we wondered, okay, well, where are we going to? put these, I, I kind of had a bit of an aversion to putting them on the roof. Um, so that's but, no longer available to you? Uh, they could be. I, we are definitely I going just towards... Just um, thinking if, that, yeah. if you're going to put the collectors on the building, then those two possible land could be sold and that money could go to offset the... <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. No, we don't. We don't own that land. Yeah, that we were going to enter into deals with the owner, so they got like ten percent of the take on the thing in order to get free land. Were you guys talking in Norwich Technologies? Were you in that program? No, 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 no. What do you use to fuel the build to heat the building now? What kind of fuel? It's propane. Propane. But the we're using the with the new setup. Uh, norm, we're using the refrigeration equipment as a heat pump because essentially that's what it is. It's a <laughs> heat pump. And um, so uh, by taking the heat um, off the, the compressors when they're yeah. cooling, uh, essentially the building is this. Everywhere in the building you're either cooling or heating something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is to just keep that energy yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. in the building and yeah. shuffle it around. Mm -hmm. And with our Pentium 386, we were unable <laughs> we were unable to do that properly. <laughs> but now uh, it's a different game. The controls have really made this a different game. So if you know how to con if you know what the controls need to do, and you can follow the complicated logic of the systems. Um, you know, <coughs> it can you can really can can't hit perfection, but you can you can go a long way, a lot further than we could 20 years ago. You know, so were you guys were you guys getting grants from um, Efficiency Vermont and all that stuff? Yeah, they've been, yeah. they've been great. They've been really they've been great. Matter of fact, and they liked um, what we did. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and so uh, we actually they had us do a presentation to other rinks in New England um, sure. was last May yeah. Yeah. and that was the second one we gave um, yeah. so because basically we're sharing everything with everybody mm -hmm. you know we we're not like taking out patents or any of that kind of mm -hmm. stuff um, awesome. we're just we're giving it out just mm -hmm. similar to the lead certified rank I did like I'm just I I share everything yeah. every single thing 
period. That's you know? so cool. I mean, imagine all the, all the hockey, all the rinks around the country. I mean, you know, it's amazing to think about the potential. Yeah, and if you yeah, can, honestly, really if you can cool. make an uh, energy pig like a hockey rink net zero, you can make any building. Truthfully, yeah. Yes, I see. Yeah, it sounds like you're using uh, state-of-the-art state equipment. I was wondering what the projected lifespan of this, uh, of these units are, and so forth. Yeah, that's a real. That, again, that's a really good question. So, um, to be clear, I showed a, um, a rate of return on investment, which was based on everything we did and how much we're saving. The reality is three quarters of that work had to be done anyhow because the equipment was at an age where it had to be replaced or significantly refurbished. And, um, you know, when, once you start hitting 10 to 15 years, some of it comes up and then at 20 more comes up and at 25 there'll be a little bit more. Um, if I um, showed the rate of return based on the incremental cost of actually taking the equipment which we had to replace and making the systems more efficient, the rate of return on that piece of the investment, just see to the pantsing, it would probably be over 50%. That, that's, that's huge. That's, that's, a great, that's a great question. So. Yes? When you're talking about the heat savings off of the pumps, are you talking about the refrigeration cycle or are you talking about the resistance heating or both? We, we, didn't, we, don't, we don't do resistance heating. Well, you get resistance because you're running a motor. That kind of heat, the ambient heat from the... the yeah, that, the, right, the ambient heat. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so we're, we're basically, uh, we run a tap off the hot gas line that would go up to the that goes up to the cooling tower, and we tap off that and send that heat into the tank you saw in that picture. And so when the boiler calls for any kind of heat, the first place it looks is that tank that has that reclaimed heat in it. Essentially, that's it. It sounds easy. It's a little trickier to pull off, but it's, you know, it's basic. So. Good.